you guys are aware of Summer Walker, right? You guys are very aware of her recent album, which I'm still playing now at the moment. Um, let me just cop some please here before I continue talking. Bappity bappity ba. Where do I want to cop my please here? Let's go to artists. Let's go down to S. Summer Walker. Uh, yeah, so Summer Walker's album is obviously out. You guys are all aware of it. I have it here on my phone so you can see that I'm a fan. I've listened to it a lot of times um, over it. I think my favorite song on there might be Tonight. Uh, nobody else i kill you obviously with jenny aiko the track with a boogie stretch it out or stretch you out sorry is really cool it's really good too sorry a boogie is a really underrated um r&b hip-hop crooner um his guest appearances on tracks are really good i know some people kind of had the idea that he makes songs for kids sometimes his own singles can be a little bit bubblegummy but when he's on actual when he's guest appearing on other people's tracks and he has to give the mature swag sex talk there's no one better than that. He's really fucking good. He's kind of he's very underrated in the same respect like a little Dirk is. Very very underrated. Um, obviously, um, yeah, potential come through. Um, loads of really amazing uh, tracks on here, right? It's I didn't I just remember this. 18 minutes long, 49 minutes. So it just comes down under the 50 minute mark, which is you know the perfect amount of time for you to kind of listen to an album overall. Whoops, I'm playing it before I get demonetized. Um, really really cool, right? Great album. I'm a big fan of it. So she decides she did a. a, a she obviously has gained a lot of traction. It's gone down as. You know, it's probably had the same kind of reaction to, in terms of R and B fans, in the same way that um, Bryson Tiller's debut album Trap Soul had, right? It's really kind of captured everyone's imagination. Every, you know, girls love the fucking world are using her lyrics as her captions and shit, as the captions, whatever it may be. And then she announced her tour. She went all over the place. She came to Europe for a bit, did a couple of shows in London, and now she's back in the US touring again. You know, it's a standard practice for an artist, and I'm sure that the re reception that the album has garnered has also led to more dates being added right i think other dates have been added to the show but then aside from music sam walker's obviously spoken quite openly about her issues with social anxiety right her mental health issues her anxiety issues some you know whatever it may be maybe i'm not sure if it's depression where she's got some issues around performing and around being big crowds and obviously you know, being a really successful recording artist, especially an R&B singer, especially an attractive black R&B singer, especially in this era, um, especially with her history as, you know, um, her past. I think she was a stripper back in the day. So she's got that presence on stage. She's able to really command the stage. So, you know, the idea that people are going to go to a performance video, um, take some clips of her, show them online. It's just going to, there's, good, there's a lot about her to like and be interested in, right? Very intriguing artist and personality. So you look at that and you're like, huh, um it's kind of all set up for a person to kind of really blow and to become the next big star but then sometimes your own personality and the work that you do can sometimes lead you down a path that you don't actually want to go down and it looks like summer walker is kind of going through that experience at the moment she's kind of you know made some comments and tweets here and there indirectly saying how trash the industry is how fed up she is about you know having to meet people people's standards whether it be fans or whether it be industry executives it just wants to just make music and just you know hide away at home and unfortunately it seems as if nowadays with the accessibility of music with the idea that fans can be in touch fans are able to be close to the artists more than they ever have done in the past um artists are also able to contact connect with their fans much quicker um you can produce music on the laptop you know with minimal equipment i think that one of the issues is with all those kind of benefits is that now fans want to want more of you. They expect to have more of you. They want to see you at a concert. They want to see you at a festival. They want to meet you at a meet and greet. They expect a little bit more. I'm not sure it's because of the access, because they see you a lot more, so they feel as if like they can just bump into you on the street or something. But there is a side of it where artists are demanded to do a lot more press and a lot more media than they probably have done ever before. Now, also it might have to do with the fact that organic reach I think for the most part, organic reach is essentially over. Um, you have to hope a new platform kind of pops up out of the blue to kind of allow you to maybe reach people organically. Most reach has to be manufactured or bought in some respects. So you're always constantly, if you're an, a publicist, you're always constantly having to put your client in front of the camera in order to kind of garner that attention, to put some eyes and ears on the projects they're doing. So that can obviously, you know, um, become a little bit tiresome. And you hear even with MMA fighters, right? They have to do loads of press junkets, loads of media press days. And, you know, an MMA fight is even, you know, more high stakes than a music career, right? Music careers, look at look at Tinash, look at look at Tinashe, right? You music career for the most part, unless you're a complete dickhead, you can get an ungodly amount of second chances to, you know, to to come back good again because the the um, 
the profits that can be made from an artist actually coming back and resurrecting their career far outweigh the millions you might lose in the interim of kind of trying to make it work, right? If Tinashe is able to come back into the scene, get a couple of good writers, link up with some good producers, get her choreography back where it was before, you know, link up with a really influential videographer and just really do an amazing marketing rollout um, in terms of how she announces her comeback onto the scene, you know, she could go on to make the company or the record label millions and millions, hundreds of millions of pounds. Like it can be, you know, because music lasts forever in that respect. So you get it. But there's also a side of me that's like, it must be hard for a person like Summer Walker probably obviously doesn't want to be in front of the camera to go through this. And she made that video now recently just kind of explaining that she's essentially going to cancel a few of her shows in the US because she's really struggling with her anxiety problems. And then I'm going to the other side, we're going to have another flip opinion that I have of it that may be a bit insensitive, but also something that's kind of been, you know, um, eating away at me as I've been kind of reading these issues that Summer Walker's been going through, um, issues on social media that Cardi B's been going through. It's just, you know, there's just a lot of noise happening with these artists that I kind of want to speak about. But let's hear what Summer Walker has to say about the fact she has to cancel some shows. Um, I just want to say that I really, really, really appreciate um, anyone who genuinely loves my music, plays the fuck out of my music, comes to the shows, comes to the meet and greets, um, supports me, and really love and accept and respect my um, my personality. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to finish this tour because it doesn't really coexist with my social anxiety and um, my introverted personality. Um, but I, I really hope that people understand and respect that at the end of the day, I'm a person. I have feelings. Um, you know, I get tired. I get sad. Um, and it's just a lot. And so I, I don't want to lose myself for someone else. I, I want to give y'all what I can. Um, so I'm going to keep making music and I'm going to do a few shows, but I can't finish. So she's going to cancel a few of the shows. She announced they're going to be refunding people straight away, right? So there's a part of me that's like, you know, especially if, if you've watched the Amy Winehouse documentary, you'll know just how um, blood-sucking and callous some of the record executives are, and sometimes even her own family, right? Especially her dad, right? Like an absolute dickhead in the documentary. And essentially, they were all aware that she, essentially, you know, Amy Winehouse was like a ticking time bomb. There's only a matter of fact before... It was only a matter of time before... The inevitable happened and unfortunately she passed away um but they were actively still pushing her to perform and go to concerts and go to festivals even though she was a complete um shadow of her former self she lost tons of weight she looked completely gaunt horrible she sounded horrible even when she was on the stage it just was a complete disaster and there was no one in the record industry or no one in her label who kind of was taking the executive decision to kind of put her on ice and have her just recuperate, go to rehab, and actually, you know, have rehab, assisted rehab, because I think she ended up dying because she went cold turkey. And is it because she decided to go cold turkey? In terms of sobriety, and that essentially had a negative reaction on her. I'm pretty sure something to do with that kind of stuff, right? So no one in the record label was willing to kind of take this executive decision, um, um, forget the immediate money and the immediate, you know, paycheck and the immediate 10% you'd get for her appearances, and, this, and tell her to go to rehab and kind of really get better. No one did that. So um, even her closest friends and her partner weren't necessarily cognitive of trying to get her to get some help. So when Summer Walker pleads with her fans like this in public and says, hey, I really need to kind of look after myself. I think I'm heading down a bad path. You have to you have to honestly respect it and honor it in that respect. And you have to say, yeah, take your time away from the music and do what you need to do. But there's also a side of me that's like, I think there needs to be an understanding, especially some of the acts coming up nowadays especially when i watch some of the gary v stuff and you see gary v talking to a lot of like up and coming people who want to make an industry there needs to be a conversation there needs to be had with them where they kind of are told um just what to expect when they decide to um get in a get into the music industry they need to have an understanding of just how hard it is to be a, a professional recording artist, right? Not to be an artist, to be a professional recording artist, a professional musician, right? That needs to be a conversation people have. Because I think nowadays, I think the glitz and glam um, of it and, um, you know, the probably the immediate monetary rewards of it are probably not matching up with the realities of what it means to be a recording artist, whether it's appearances, whether it's writing, whether it's being in a studio, um, whether it's just general label shit 
there are stuff you have there's things that you have to do as an artist that are way outside of the create the creative landscape of sitting down and thinking about themes and ideas that go into an album or sonically or feelings or tones there's loads of things that are outside of textures that are to do with music that people don't really understand and i think that is part of the reason that you're seeing a lot of these newer acts that are coming up and now suddenly being thrust up into the limelight and being pushed as a one to look for you know because you know some walker's not she's pretty green in the industry but she's now being heralded as like the next queen it's a lot of responsibility it's a lot of pressure to put on one person's shoulder but it's also something that i feel a lot of these artists are kind of vying for they're kind of coming out of the blocks really hot really strong they're trying to push for legendary status pretty quickly within their run up or within their come up. Some of them even, some of them have even, some of them even regard themselves as legends in the making, which is you know is crazy to say that. So I think there needs to be an understanding of just what a legendary status means, what it means to kind of try and occupy that space. It means having to do you know tons of shows in Europe, a place that you probably don't want to be, right? Um, away from your family. It means traveling um, in, in Middle America and you know doing shows. Um, again and again and again and again in front of people you know um it means putting out more music right that's, that's the other thing too you have to understand like the bigger the success that you become the more demand there is for your music or for the stuff that you do which is why you have to respect people like you know the j coles and and you know the kendrick lamars and the you know td as a label or even drake in some respect where they're able to kind of dictate when and where they drop music but for the most part the biggest artists out there put out music constantly they're always touring um, they're always putting on a live show. They're always appearing at festivals because, you know, partly because that's where they make most of their money, but also because they want to make sure they're feeding that, they're feeding that beast, right? They're stoking the flames of that fire, making sure their fans don't go somewhere else. But I'd say in some Oka's defense, nowadays fans are a little bit more, um, they're a little bit more crazy. They're a little bit more, there's a little bit more um, standard when it comes to fans. So I think, if some Walker effectively took off 18 months, I don't think she'd lose any fans. I think the fans that are with her now would still stick with her. They won't replace her with anybody else. The fact that everyone's, um, you know, going crazy over her album might say that, you know, is it maybe an illustration that she is um, satisfying a need that people didn't think was being satisfied at the moment. And yeah, like she probably has a point. Do you know what I mean? But then again, that that's the issue. There is a part of her as probably as the artist is like, you know what? Can I take that time away though? Will I lose ground? Will I lose his momentum? And I don't think you do. And I think there needs to be maybe an understand, maybe um, a decision made when you're making your album or maybe when you're introducing yourself in the industry as a as what kind of artist you're going to be. Maybe it's hard to think about that when you're making a song on Fruity Loops on your fucking bust up computer in your mum's basement. But you need to, maybe you have to be intentional from the very beginning about what kind of artist you want to be. Do you want to go down lane A or lane B? And then every every move that you make, even at the beginning, even at that stage on SoundCloud when you're getting two listens, has to then marry up to that overall goal. Because I think what happens is that you start off as a SoundCloud person and you have this chip on your shoulder that you think you're better than everyone on the charts, right? So you start acting like it. You start believing it. You start manifesting it. You start making EPs and albums and songs that are really well-crafted and have a lot of fucking you know time and emotion has gone into them. And you don't really have that much of an audience, but you're 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 obviously trying to present yourself as a big act, right? You're tweeting and talking about we, and you have there is no team around you, but you're trying to give the impression you have a team around you. You're trying to give the impression that you had a good show when no one turned up. You're doing loads of like big act sort of stuff so that you give the impression that you're kind of faking it till you make it. So then when somebody decides to believe your your um your narrative and put money behind you and sign you to a record label. And then the real pressure of being a recording artist starts. I don't know if I have that much patience for you now deciding, oh, it's too much. Because you were talking a big game. Now you have to show and prove. I don't, I don't mean that to some hooker, but I mean in some artists who do that kind of thing. Like you're, you spoke a big game. You're trying to act like Billy, 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 Billy Big Balls, right? Now you're there. You have to show and prove. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for some hooker for being so open because I think what it does is that the next generation of artists coming up are the ones that are going to come up who don't necessarily have the exposure or the, you know, the awareness or, you know, aren't signed to a label or just on the come up, they're unsigned, can see what she's going through and be like, okay, cool. Like, what do you, like, like, what do you really, who do you really want to be? Do you want to be Snow Allegra or do you want to be Summer Walker? Like, what level of artist do you want to be? And sometimes, maybe if you sat Snow Allegra down, she might tell you she wants to be as big as Beyonce. But there might be, I, she might be doing some action. She might be intentionally doing things that are putting her in a category where she can go and and you know and tour for 
let's say four months of the year and the rest of the time chill in a house somewhere in the middle of Scandinavia, you know, writes for some people, walk her dog and shit and relax. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's a, probably a life that you'd want. But then if you want the lifestyle where you're attending every big festive, every big, um, you know, award ceremony, red carpet, you're smooching with all the, you know, with all the high highfalutes in the industry, you might have this might be have some it might be have to be some give and take in that respect, right? Because once you go to the industry events, people are gonna be asking you for features. People are gonna be asking you to, you know, do a track, do a soundtrack, make a new app, make a new EP. That's all the industry people are. All that pressure comes from there. Um, and you're also gonna want to improve. You're also gonna want to show improve. You're also gonna want to show out because you're in that space. It's a very hard thing to kind of really get your head around. But again, um, what you call it? Um, thoughts with Summer Walker actually going through this tough stuff. I think. Again, it, it really reminds me a lot of the Amy Winehouse stuff that she was going through, but I'm just happy nowadays kids are more able to talk about it aloud. And also, you know, maybe the stigma of social media, maybe the stigma of mental health is dying down somewhat. So it allows people to be a bit more open and maybe as well, the fans are a little bit more understanding and also, you know, and are aware that, you know, if their artists are not in the right frame of mind, they're not going to get the best product, they're not going to get the best show. So it's probably advantageous for fans, even though fans can be selfish in nature, to probably allow their favorite artists to take some time away, recuperate, recover, and then come back on the other side, you know, firing for more cylinders. Because then, you know, everyone wins that way. Um, but yeah, really cool message from Summer Walker and hope she gets better over time.